in optimization, once we have defined our polygon, we have to find the vertices of the polygon. In this example, my non-zero constraints are up here in red, and the rest of the constraints are here in black. This is my polygon, and it has four vertices, which I have labeled A, B, C, and D. I have to identify the X and Y coordinates of each of these vertices. Starting with vertex A. I look at vertex A and I ask myself, which two lines cross at this point? And it is equation 3 and equation 5 that cross at this point. So I write those two equations here next to vertex A. I ask myself the same question for each of the other vertices. Vertex B is where equations 4 and 5 cross. Vertex C is where the non-zero constraint equation 2 crosses equation 4. And equation 2 crosses equation 3 here at vertex D. The next thing to do is for me to find the x and y coordinates of each of these vertices. Let's just focus our attention on vertex A. Vertex A is where x is equal to 50 and where x is equal to 2y. For this procedure, I don't use the inequality with the symbol, the greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to symbols. I pretend those symbols are equal signs. And what I am doing is to use substitution to find the point of intersection of those two lines. If x equals 50 and x equals 2y, then I can replace the x in the second equation with a 50. The idea is, is if x equals 50, then this x in the other equation must be equal to 50. So I write that. I replace the x with 50 and I have 50 equals 2y. Now I have to simplify to isolate my y. If 50 equals 2y, I can divide both sides of the equation by 2. The 2's cancel on the right side and my y is now isolated. It's equal to 50 divided by 2, which is 25. That means my y coordinate of the vertex A is 25. I already know from equation 3 that my x coordinate of that vertex has to be 50. So I can write the x y coordinate pair 50 comma 25. And I can identify that on the graph as well. Next to vertex A, I'm going to place the xy coordinate pair 50 comma 25. Now let's move on to vertex B. B is where equations 4 and 5 cross. I write those equations here with equal signs instead of inequality symbols. And I say if x is equal to 2y, then this x in the first equation must also be equal to 2y. So I can do substitution. I can rewrite this equation where that x has been replaced by a 2y. I have 2y plus y equals 100. That simplifies to 3y equals 100. And if 3y equals 100, I can divide both sides by 3. The 3's on the left side cancel, and my y is isolated. It's equal to 100 divided by 3, which is 33.3. .3. Now, to find my x-coordinate, if y is equal to 33.3 .3 and x is equal to 2y, then x must be equal to 2 times 33.3 .3, and that simplifies to x is equal to 66.7. I know my xy coordinates of vertex B. They are 33.3 .3 and 66.7 and I identify those on the graph. Vertex C has the equations 2 and equation 4 that cross at that vertex. And y equals 0 is one of those equations. So I already know that my y coordinate of that vertex is going to be 0. If x plus y equals 100 and y equals 0, then I can write 
x plus 0 equals 100 using substitution. And x plus 0 equals 100, of course, simplifies to x equals 100. Now I know x equals 100 and y equals 0 for that vertex. So I write the x and y coordinate pair for that vertex and I label it on the graph. Finally, vertex D is the simplest one in this example. My two equations are equations 2 and 3 that cross at vertex D. And those equations are y equals 0 and x equals 50. That tells me my y coordinate is 0 and my x coordinate is 50. So I don't have to do any substitution. My vertex is 50 comma 0. I identify that on the graph. And I am finished. I have found the xy coordinates of all four of my vertices and it's time for me to move on to the next stage of optimization.